another week. Now, we know that the team is not in Melbourne. They are, of course, in Queensland. And we thought, because it's a special episode, we won't just get one guest, we'll get two guests for you this week. So joining me all the way from Brisbane is the two co-captains of the team, Kate Maloney and Lizzie Watson. Welcome to Vixens Live. Hello, how are you, Pete? <laughs> Look, I'm going well. I'm a bit lonely in the studio here on my own. Clint Stanaway, he's gone missing again, just MIA, just did not show today, but that's okay. <laughs> I think we've got it under control. Uh, first, Kate, to you, what's it like up there at the moment? Tell us what the last month has been like for you and the team. The last month has been crazy. Um, sort of spent a bit of time up on the Sunshine Coast, went back home and thought, we were loving playing at John Kane Arena and we get to have a lot of home games there to finish off the season and then it was pack our bags again quickly and <laughs> off to Adelaide and sort of not knowing when you were playing or um, how that was going to go. But we're settled in now, we're in Brisbane um, and yeah, we've got two games to go. And what are the conditions like up there for you? Because I don't believe you're allowed out to do whatever you like, lie on the beach and get a suntan. That's not really what it's like, is it? No, it's not. And it's a bit stricter than probably what we had last year in Brisbane. So um, we're sort of on stay at home restrictions. So we can't go to supermarkets or anything like that. That's sort of all delivered to us. And for us, it's more just getting out to go for a walk, get a takeaway coffee. But other than that, it's pretty much in our hotels, training and playing. And Lizzie, we know that you missed the first part of the hub. And then this second part of the hub, you get to go and join the team. <laughs> Which I know Kate is very happy about, but one thing I've been absolutely loving is your role as assistant coach and sitting next to Simone and during the Giants game there was a few close-ups of you actually telling Simone what to do. <laughs> is that what was going it actually, on? <laughs> it is a very stressful job. I don't know how Simone does it, but um, yeah, it's been really exciting. I have loved it. Simone asked me when I first came up into the hub, um, so I've got no Shirelle and no diet. Do you want to sit next to me on the bench? So I think it's nice um, sometimes, I don't know what I really offer, but I think Simone likes having that voice that she can just listen to and then sort of dump everything else onto me as well. I think, Bianca, <laughs> we need to get a petition out to get Liz a coach's blazer because yes, I mean, at polo. the moment she's in her polo <laughs> and I just think if you're going to be the assistant coach, You've got to look the part. You've got to get the coach's the blazer. The shirt and the blazer. Yeah. That's right. And the coach's... Yeah. Every year the coach's uniform is so important. We know Simone will spend a lot of time planning what she's going to wear and the rest of the crew. So you do need to be included in this. It's you do, because been... you get so judged for it. I feel like we look at the other coaches every year and really rank what they're wearing. So, um... <laughs> Lizzie rocked up to training the other day, Bianca, <laughs> as assistant coach. And the first coach I've ever seen to wear bike shorts to training. Whoa! So... <laughs> I'm surprised there wasn't a crop top on. <laughs> <laughs> no, on a serious note, Liz, how much... How much do you get to say during a game? Does Simone ask you what changes to make? Does she ask you your opinion on what's actually going on on the court? Or is she more just telling you what she's thinking? No, we actually, um, I'm quite surprised she does ask me uh, a lot of things. And especially in the timeouts, she'll always look to me before she goes out and speaks to the girls and says what something I can say to the attack end. And um, obviously Simone's more the defensive coach. So she knows what to do down that defence end. But I think my role at the moment is to sort of look at the centre passes, the goalers and how that's working. And then, yeah, timeouts, um, yeah, give something to the attack end. And also if she's thinking about changes, she'll bring them up and um, say, watch this and watch that and see if you need to change someone or bring someone back on. So yeah, I'm actually, um, yeah, quite surprised with how much she's had me involved. Now we know it, you have been chasing that next win um, for the last couple of weeks and the Giants game that you played uh, yesterday. Yeah, things didn't necessarily go to plan, but there was a lot of still good things that were happening in that game. I think Hannah Mundy and seeing what she's being able to do in that wing attack position, um, I think it's been great to see her come into her own. Talk us through from your perspective, Kate, how that game panned out. Yeah, we were into that game um, really confident thinking you know we've done a lot of work that we could get the job done and so we were disappointed with the result um, we didn't execute well enough both off our center pass and gain balls um, thought our defensive end did a great job to get us the ball but we just weren't able to execute at the other end and that's sort of been a pattern for us across the whole season and we really want two more wins um, at the back end of this season with our last two games and we know they're two areas that we're going to have to improve on if we want to get those wins. 
And when we speak about, you know, you've got two games to go, what do you then focus on now at training? How, you know, there's not much gap between games. It's not like what you usually play one game every weekend. How do you, how much time can you spend actually training together to build on the performance from last week? Yeah, we've got a little bit of a gap between now and our next game. Um, so we will have a look at that Giants game, things that we can improve on and take into our game against Adelaide. Um, the changeover from Adelaide to Firebirds, that's another story. I think we've got under 48 hours, so there won't be much training in between those. But, you know, when you play a game like we did uh, yesterday, you just want to get back out on court and sort of redeem yourselves. And, um, yeah, we're really looking forward to doing that against the Thunderbirds on Monday. There has been some things to celebrate, and that is um, Kumwenda celebrating her 100th game and Kaylee Stanton celebrating her 50th game. Let's take a look. Kumwenda's open and find her underneath the post. Listen to the roar! It's been a great privilege to have MJ a part of Vixens. She's such, such a personality, and we've seen more and more of that personality over the years. Yes, she's amazing on court. But I love now that I see the confidence and her voice and her, her leadership within the group. I think one of the most amazing things about playing with MJ is you just realise how lucky we are to be here in Australia and to be playing and just how grateful she is for this opportunity. It just makes you realise as well. It's so exciting playing with Kelly yeah, because I'm learning a lot from her and yeah, she can shoot like long bombs, so it's exciting. Well, she's been around the netball world for a long time and I just think it's exciting to see what she can bring and she's definitely slotted in with the girls and, and how we want to play this year. She's definitely increased our ability to sing. She's a great singer and she's very chirpy. Um, she's just great to have around as well. So there you go, two big milestones, but especially for MJ, 100 games. Give us an insight on what it's like to play with her. Oh, it is the best. I think we've played with MJ for a long time and she's one of those goalers that when I first started playing with her, you didn't really know what she was doing or where she was going, but that's why she was so great. She was, um, you know, very easy to play with once you sort of knew. You just have to let her do her thing and we'll figure out how to play around her because MJ at her best is when she's not overthinking things. She just plays freely. Um, so I think, yeah, it's been a privilege to play with her um, right from the start. And, and she's always said Vixens is her dream team. So for her to finish, or not finish, but play her 100th with us, um, it's pretty special for her. Well, let's hope she does finish her career with the Vixens as well. Yeah, I'm not letting you go. No, yeah, she's saying. She's <laughs> and so, and talking about MJ, I think one moment that we often see in games, and we did see in the Giants game, was her all alone in the circle and absolutely <laughs> screaming for that ball. Does that give you a fright when you hear that, or you just know she's free? We've all heard that when yes. we've got the ball before. But that's what you love about her is... She wants the ball in her hands. She wants to shoot the goal and she'll tell you if she's open. That's what she wants. <laughs> I love that it. That was like one of her loudest screams. That was pretty tame compared to something like You would have had some fear. Yeah. <laughs> I love that move where she drives out, drives back in and yeah, she's home screamed. alone. And absolutely burns the defender, which we don't love as defenders when <laughs> that happens to us, of course. All right, you two, I thought as two senior members of the team, I'm going to put you under the pump and I've got some trivia questions for you and all of our Vixens fans tonight can join in at home as well to see if you know the answers. Now, this is all about the history of the Melbourne Vixens and maybe a bit before the Melbourne Vixens as well. Whew, so let's see how much you know about the history of the club that you're at. Now, some you can do we together. <laughs> some I feel like we need to cut a Monday here because she's a netball Really? Fan. Everything about the Vixens and everything about the Kessels and it. Phoenix. So I might have to phone her friends. <laughs> well, you're not allowed to do that. So some <laughs> questions you can problem solve together. Other questions are going to be directed at you individually, okay? So the first one's to both of you. Which was the first Netball World Cup Simone McInnes played in? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you just said this is about Vixens. Uh, I know. Well, just, and the, your coach as well. She's part of your history. In like mid 20s. She was a bit later. I don't think she, she I reckon she was about 28. All right. So, <laughs> what year though was the actual World Cup? Now, Australia did win this one, if that helps. What year are we in? When, we when did Shaz win? Like, I, I'm going to say, like... When did she shoot that goal? And won? I'll help you out there. That was 1999. 
Yeah, okay. So I'm saying, okay. When we were born. No, that's not the answer. No, no, that's, <laughs> to our production no. crew. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon. Maybe 91. Maybe 91. 91, yeah. 91. Let's get 91. Ding ding! Where do we go? Oh, yes, yes, so I was one. before I was born. How yeah. are you? Great wow. problem solving. Okay, <laughs> this one is just for Lizzie. Okay, oh, no. so Kate, you've got to be quiet. No helping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, Kate Maloney debuted in what season for the Vixens? And an extra point if you can tell us who she debuted against. What team? Okay, so it's definitely 2013 because it was the year before me. And I'm going to just go with round three <laughs> against the Swifts. <laughs> and Kate, what's the answer? It was round three against Tactics. Oh. 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 About the I mean, we, were, we would have been up by about 15 goals and so I would have been like, let's just chuck her off. <laughs> Just chuck her on at wing defence, give her a go. <laughs> okay, you got you got part of that question right. Did you run that court? Was I on with you at that stage? Oh, you might have got rested. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been very encouraging, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, this is to both of you. Which player has won the most Sherelle McMahon medals? Oh, I think I know this. Maddie. Maddie? Maddie Brown? Yeah. Or you. I don't know if she would have won three. No, I reckon she... You've won two, haven't you? Yeah. Liz, but I Liz she... or Maddie? Maddie. Maddie and Liz. Maddie. Mm -hmm. Jeeva. 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 Oh. Mentor. Jeeva won three? I believe oh, so. Because Maddie did an ACL and still got runners up. So <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> She still got runners up and she missed like half the year. Well, you never know, um, you would <laughs> still win the Charlie Mile medal this year. Was that when all three of us finished last in the yeah, bottom three? Yeah, three of us got nothing that year. <laughs> that was my last year. <laughs> no, you don't say that. I got coaches award. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah, of course you did. <laughs> okay, this is for you, Kate. Who did Lizzie replace on the Melbourne Vixens list as a replacement player? That is wow. so easy compared it to It was 2014. <laughs> no, Alyssa <laughs> McLeod. Correct. Well done. Oh. I knew I'd be better at this interview. <laughs> okay, for both of you. In who did the Melbourne Phoenix defeat to win the inaugural Commonwealth Bank Trophy? Now, this is way back in 1997, and Simone McInnes and Sherelle McMahon were both in the team then. Wow. Did they? Wow. They played together. Wow, I didn't know that. Go Shan. She yeah. Was that. They did um, 1997. Well, I think Swifts would have been really good back then. So New South Wales Swifts, lock it in, Eddie. Lock it in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Unfortunately for birds. you, it was the Thunderbirds. Oh, oh wow. Okay. I know. See, back in the day, it used to be the Sydney Swifts and the Adelaide Thunderbirds and Melbourne Phoenix, which were the three that would kind of fight it out every year for the title. Anyway, back when I was in New South Wales Swifts anyway, that was, was wrong. The wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, true. Okay. <laughs> Another one for both of you. Which Melbourne team did Caitlin Thwaites first play for? Kestrels. Yes. And oh for all of those, <laughs> were you a ball girl for Kestrels, Kate Maloney, at one stage? Probably. No. You weren't? I'm sure you were. You were just a big fan, <laughs> weren't you? I always said I was a Kestrels fan. Yes, okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was a Chloe Watson that was a ball girl. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, another one for both of you. Who was the coach of the inaugural season of the Melbourne Vixens? Yeah. You can say that. Julie Hornwick. <laughs> we can't hear your whispers, Kate. <laughs> I'm just in my teammate. <laughs> okay, great. Good one. All right, this is for you, Lizzie. Where did Kate Maloney play her junior netball? Diamond Creek. <laughs> well done. And for you, Kate? What year did Liz Watson win the Liz Ellis Diamond? Um, when? 2019? 2018. 2018 or 2019? Well, you tell us. 2018. 
18. You were there. Well done. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> I would have given it to you every year. <laughs> okay, well done, girls. I think you did quite well there. Hopefully everyone at home uh, knew some of the answers to those questions. Maybe not the uh, ones really personally about Kate and Lizzie and when they debuted. <laughs> that was just to throw them off in there. Um, Lizzie, one thing I want to do is take a look at your fearless video and get your version of what leadership looks like now that you aren't actually out there on the court. To lead fearlessly, I think it's through your actions. So for me, it's just going out there and doing it. I think we can talk about it a lot, but as a leader, you've got to go out there on court, be strong and be the one that people want to play with. I think to overcome fear, we're lucky in a team sport that we can share that love with everyone. So having my teammates around me, the staff, the coaches, it makes it a lot easier when you go out there, you know you've got the support of everyone at the Vixens and that makes the job a lot easier. Netball and the Melbourne Vixens make me feel very proud. Um, it's, it's quite special to be able to play for your state um, and know that there's such a strong culture and history of success in netball in Victoria. So for me, running out there each week, it's that feeling of pride and, and wanting to do the best you can for your state. We see in that video that parts of it you are on crutches and obviously recovering from your ankle foot injury. But what's it been like to be in a leadership position but not actually be able to get out there on court and be, you know, that example that you want to set while you're out there playing and training? Has it been a different um, part to navigate for you? Yeah, and I think um, especially when the girls were away in the sunny coast um, and I stayed back home, I was still in my boot and... Um, you know, going through appointments and things, so I didn't go. But I think that was probably the most challenging time to try and connect with the girls and actually stay, um, you know, involved and give them, um, you know, the support that they needed. So it's been really nice to be up here with them now. Um, and I think we still catch up regularly, myself, Kate, uh, Emily and Joe. We've got a WhatsApp chat we're always talking. So it's, yeah, a lot easier when you're here. You're amongst the group and I guess just being that positive voice and um, not necessarily being able to do anything on court but still offering that advice off the court as well. And you definitely do see things differently from the sidelines. So it's been nice to see and yeah, I how that's happening. And I was going to say, I think too, for any young netballers at home, that's when you are injured, you can always add value to a team as well and have a positive impact on a team, even though personally you might be going through a really hard time. What sort of things can you suggest to some of the young netballers out there that they can do to have an impact on their team? Um, you've probably seen in the video a bit of passing and <laughs> Simone gets me in um, some court sessions as a post or a passer. Um, I think even when the girls come off for a drink break, we're always chatting, offering advice and, and just seeing things from the sideline as well. Um, it's been a big learning experience for the during the games and having quarter times and half times and actually connecting with the midcourt and the goalers and trying to get everyone sort of saying what they need to say about what's happening out on court but then putting in what you see from the sidelines as well. So I think, yeah, it's just probably just watching, observing and, and seeing it from a different perspective. And to you, Kate, we know it hasn't been the season that you would have liked it to be, but as a leader, you certainly can't drop your head and you never drop your head when we are out there. You always get such a great insight in the coverage just of you talking to the girls in the huddle and being encouraging, but being very calm. Has it been a really different approach for you in the way that you've led this team this year compared to last year? Yeah, it is really different and as Lizzie said, it's been for her a massive learning but for myself also, we haven't been in this position as a Vixens group before and we've got so many young girls coming through who are doing a great job out on court and the way that we review games, the way that we look at games, it's so different but um, yeah, I've loved it still and uh, hopefully we can finish off with a couple of wins. So the girls have worked so hard and um, we've had so much amazing support back home and um, we'd love to get the wins for the team but for our fans back home and um, yeah just finish off the year on a bit of a positive note. And we have seen some raw emotion from Simone McInnes especially in those post-match press conferences. I know she's handballed a few to, for you to do Lizzie but we saw after your Giants game you know she, she says it's not good enough she says that the one percenters have to be done there's no excuses if the effort's not being put out there on the court and do you find that refreshing as players that Simone is so honest, whether it's with you guys personally as a team at, or publicly when she's coming out during the press conference and saying that? Do you think that's a great part of her as a coach? Yeah. <laughs> um, I absolutely love it. I think she is so passionate. Um, she has so much care for our team. 
but she says it how it is and what she says to us in the change rooms is pretty much what she's saying out there in the public and she's 100% correct. Um, you know, what we've put out on court, the effort, the execution, it hasn't been there and when you pull on the Melbourne Vixens dress, um, you've got to go out there and perform and we, and we haven't been able to do that yet and I just love that she's so honest, that she's so passionate um, about our club and about getting better and um, she has put so much into us this last 12 months and as I said before, we want to get those wins for our club, for our fans, for ourselves but, you know, even more importantly for Simone who's put so much um, effort in, travelled around Australia with us this year but um, we absolutely love her uh, and hopefully... Uh, we can get her a couple of wins at the end of this season. Well, let's talk about your next game and you're coming up against the Adelaide Thunderbirds. Now, Coach Lizzie, I'm going to ask you first, what do the team need to do to make sure they secure a win against the Thunderbirds? Well, I think, you know, Thunderbirds played last night and had a great win against Lightning, so they're definitely a team that, um, you know, can cause big upsets like we saw. So I think, um, for me, it's probably going to be that attacking end, and obviously they've got Sterling down there in goalkeeper. So if we can keep her really quiet, not throwing the ball into her hands and letting her come <laughs> to the game, um, that is when she, the whole team lifts. I think she is someone who just really sparks their whole team. So it's probably just playing smart, and I think we saw last night against, sorry, when we played against the Giants there was patches where we sort of just played into what they'd set up and we just sort of let the ball go and not really thought our way through what they were playing against us so the same thing with Thunderbirds um, yeah it's going to be a tough one um, but I think yeah if we play play smartly um, we'll be all right. I'm confident assistant coach. Yes me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look at some of the footage from last time you played the Thunderbirds and while we're having a look at this Kate how much do you think they've changed as a team since this last time you took them on? Yeah, they have. I think they've grown week on week. And as you said, we saw it um, last night when they played against the Sunny Coast. Um, they've got a really strong defensive end, but I think their attacking end's really coming together at the back end of this year as well. So it's going to be a tough game, but we're looking forward to it. <laughs> and with two more games to go, what do you focus on as a team? Do you have a lot of fun away from training to make sure that you're still enjoying it? Because I know it has been a long season, but are there things that you do behind the scenes now just to keep everyone's spirits up? Yeah, I think it's about trying to find a balance. Um, you know, we're living together, which is great. We love being on the road, but those connections are so important and probably feel like that's one thing that we could do better out on court. And sometimes that starts off court. So um, we'll have a bit of a team dinner tonight, which will be nice. Um, we've got some of the girls cooking mm. um, some food, which will be good. So we'll head to that <laughs> after this, which we're excited about. Um, but yeah, it is. We'll enjoy it off the court, but we'll train really hard and make sure that, yeah, what happened against the Giants hopefully doesn't happen against the Thunderbirds. And is Kaylee Stanton cooking at all? Because I, she's come on this show and she's told us that she wants to be on MasterChef <laughs> one, one day. She's no, a very she's, good cook, but she's yes. not on duties tonight. We've no. got a couple of the younger girls, I think, um, are cooking, which will mm. be nice. Do you know what's on the menu? I think it's, it's Greek. Greek. Okay, Greek. lovely. Uh, and my final thing, on Vixens Live, we often talk about TikTok. And Kate Maloney, <laughs> your name is always thrown up as someone who never gets involved, never wants to get involved. <laughs> <laughs> is that still the case? Have the girls managed to convince you in some way, shape or form to get involved? I am actually on TikTok and actually my no. followers are going up on TikTok as well. Um, what content are you producing? Yeah, but you did, it, compl you did it completely wrong. Even I had to do it. The, the young ones are doing this thing where everyone has to do it. I don't know, some sort of dance or something. And yeah, you did it, but it wasn't the criteria that they Yeah, because needed. I wanted to have a bit of fun with it. It was a bit boring. Um, but you know, I'm one of those people like this, so in, it's kind of like my thing. Like, I'm not in that, in the TikTok thing. I don't mind that. It's okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's Look at you thing and a couple of the young girls, and they love it. Too cool for school. That's who you two are. <laughs> I mean, we're too boring. old for we're TikTok. We're too old and boring for it. Well, so am I, because I do not appear on any TikToks either. I, and I'm very happy about that. <laughs> okay, that's a good point. You cannot get into me when you are <laughs> signed up to TikTok. I've taken it further than you. Well, thank you both for joining us on Vixens Live tonight. We wish you all the best for the next couple of games. And fingers crossed for two more wins on the board. All the best up there in Queensland. Thanks, CB. See you later.